to you that the uh, the Marxist left are, always argues that the the, the only reason. Uh, the United States became prosperous was on the backs of the slaves, and uh, and uh, uh, Rosenberg and uh, Birdsall, the, the authors of this book, and but they point out that all the all the real economic development occurred after slavery was ended. That's when the, the real industrial revolution occurred, when we had free labor, for the most part, and 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 after that, and slavery slave labor, of course, is inherently less efficient than free labor for obvious reasons. Uh, a uh, slave has no incentive to acquire more skills because there's nothing in it for him. If, if he did, uh, all he wants to do is escape. Whereas in free labor, uh, you know, the more skilled you are, the more pay that you'll get, the more money and more opportunities for you. And so, uh, so slavery, when it, uh, to the extent that it existed for, from the beginning, from beginning when the British came here until 1866, was a, a huge drag on, on, uh, on the economy. Uh, it, it's a, the phenomenon is that it benefited the slave owners because they're the ones who uh, expropriated the, the fruits of the labor of the slaves, but it came at the expense of dragging down everybody else economically because the whole society was poorer as a result of slavery, not just in the United States, but anywhere else where slave labor existed, especially the British Empire, because of the inherent inefficiency of, uh, of slave labor compared to free labor. That um, that issue of the inefficiency of slave labor, the only reason that that can continue, because it sounds irrational, the only reason that that can continue is with government intervention propping up uh, slavery. And, and so all of the slave states of the South, uh, and really this is a global phenomenon, uh, they had slave codes. And so everybody had to participate in the policing of the slave system. So you were re drafted into a system where you would go out on nightly patrols looking for uh, runaway slaves. You weren't allowed to teach your slaves how to read or write because that might help them escape. You weren't allowed to free your slaves, manumission laws. So there was all sorts of things that was interjected by the state to prop up what otherwise is a very inefficient uh, form of labor. Federal government did the same thing. Yeah. The Fugitive Slave Act. Uh, the reason I gave it to Tom uh, when the question was raised is one, he knows about this stuff. He's a historian as well as an eminent economist. The other is I'm, I'm afraid the New York Times is sort of looking over my shoulder whenever I <laughs> mention slavery. Uh, what happened is I was trying to explain libertarianism to them and I said the, the key problem with slavery was that it was coercive. And I said, imagine an imaginary slavery or a situation where people pick cotton and eat uh, gruel and live in a cabin, that wouldn't be so bad. And they interpreted that as saying, well, a block favors actual slavery, which is highly problematic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, um, I have, had written on this and I quote, this is, Mises says all this stuff. I mean, that, that's where I learned this this idea, like the, the how slave labor is inefficient, whatever. So the, the clear a lot of people would have you believe that there's a there's a trade of like yes we know it's morally repugnant but you know it's actually it's beneficial and a lot of people would argue that capitalism the very nature of it you know rich people earning off the especially if you were more of a marxist you would think capitalism and slavery are two sides of the same coin and that it's that's totally wrong and like i say i i learned that from mises he's got passages in human action and elsewhere talking about that so if you google like robert murphy slave labor inefficient or something it'll it'll you'll probably find that where if you want to see long passages from mises you know saying very eloquently the stuff that, that we're talking about here so this is right right from mises explaining you know this this notion and it was uh mainstream economists who don't support this notion fogel and engerman became very famous writing a book called time on the cross yeah time on the cross where they said slavery is really efficient, it's really productive, it's never going to go away on its own, and, uh, and that's why we had to have the war and kill hundreds of thousands of people.